Hey everyone, it's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. Welcome back to your MySQL tutorial series. This video we are going to be covering normalization. This is going to be an introduction. That's because the next few videos are going to talk about each of the normal forms. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, we'll get into it. But essentially, normalization is a process we go through when we're designing a database to help make sure our database has the right structure. Normalization! Now, Everyone makes normalization way too stinking complicated, <laughs> so I'm going to try and explain it in English. But essentially, normalization has three main steps, and they're called normal forms. We have first normal form, second normal form, and of course, third normal form. There are a couple others after these if you want to research more, but I think once you get to third normal form, you can say that your database is pretty well normalized. Normalized is kind of like the finish line. So if you've learned about normalization and it doesn't really click with you, essentially think of it as pouring dirty water into filters, okay? The dirty water is your database. The filters are the normal forms. And you have three filters. The top filter has very big holes. So this just gets rid of like the obvious things you shouldn't drink, like rocks and snakes and scorpions and explosives. <laughs> it gets rid of all of those ones. The second normal form has a little bit smaller holes. So this is going to get rid of, you know, dirt. <laughs> and then finally, the third normal form has like really, really, really small holes. So that's going to get rid of like bacteria, viruses, all of that good stuff. Now, this is an illustration, so it doesn't apply directly to databases. But essentially, after you get through all of those filters, you're going to have nearly pure water. If you want, you can add more filters by adding more normal forms. But there's a consequence in that, in that the database becomes more complex. Just like if you add 20 filters to a water filter, things become more complex and more <laughs> disorganized. So when we use the normal forms, we are going to look at our database with a certain pair of eyes, or think of like glasses, and we're going to look for certain things that are wrong with our database structure and then fix those. Each normal form has to have the previous one done in order to do it. So second normal form requires that first normal form is already complete. Sort of like if you have these filters in the water filter, the second one is going to be hit after the first one is already done. Third normal form, same thing. It requires that second normal form be done. And obviously, if second normal form is done, first normal form is also done. <laughs> so you have this chain. <laughs> now, when you study normalization, you are going to run across the term dependency. This is when something depends. No, not like the diapers. <laughs> this is when something depends on something else. Essentially, think of a column describing whatever the table is. So a user's table, every single column inside of the user's table describes this user. You could say the user is the entity, and each thing describing it is the attribute. We can talk about a specific user using a primary key. So for example, we could have an ID. And that ID, for example, could be seven for a specific user. Now when we describe this user, we might have something such as an email. This is an example of an attribute. This email depends on the user. That's because if we change the user to someone else, the potential of this changing is very high. <laughs> That's because every user doesn't have the same email. So that is an example of a dependency. And there's different types of dependencies that we're going to talk about when we're going over these normal forms that are not okay. So for example, second normal form talks about something known as a partial dependency. Third normal form addresses something known as transitive dependencies. That being said, I'm not going to bog you down with all of the details because when you study this stuff online, people talk about dependencies more than they talk about databases and how to design them. So you end up reading an article and you have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> At least that's how it is for me, but I'm not a super genius unlike all the other people who do this kind of stuff. So <laughs> hopefully because of that, I can explain it in English. A question we have to ask now is how do these normal forms work? How do they actually improve our database structure? The primary way they help us is by getting rid of redundancy. Redundancy is when we have something in a database more than once. For example, if we have a comments table, we might have a comment ID, poster ID, the actual message, 
and if applicable, any replies. So we'll store one reply in here. Now this is not the best way to design a table, and you'll see why in just a moment. Let's go through some example data. So the comment has the ID of 1032, just some random number, and this points back to a user with the ID of 702, for example, and the message can be anything. And this is the original comment, therefore it's not a reply, so we'll just say null. Then someone comes back and replies. And because this one is a reply to this message, all we gotta do is say our reply. And this person says, nope, I disagree. And the message we're replying to is the one that says great. <laughs> and you can see that this is just an awful way to design this. That's because we have this message in here twice and also this message cannot uniquely define a row. There could be 50 comments that have great. This here though is an example of redundancy. That's because we have the same data in here twice. And now let's say in our application, this person goes back and edits their comment. So he grabs his comment, the guy who posted this one, great, and changes it to, eh, okay. <laughs> so to do this, we would use an update statement and say, update the message of the comment with the comment ID of 1032 and change it to whatever we want to change it to. But this is dumb because it doesn't update this one. This is an example of an anomaly. An anomaly is when something does not work the way it's expected to work. It's out of the ordinary. With database normalization though, we can prevent anomalies. But do keep in mind that this builds off of relationships. So that's something we talked about in previous videos. I highly recommend you remember how to design a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, and a many-to-many -many relationship. Because just doing that alone would help us to understand how to design tables pretty good. We also need to have a foundation in primary keys and foreign keys. Because that alone would help us understand that this is just a dumb way to design this. <laughs> We'll get into the good ways to design things in the upcoming videos. But that's all I have for you guys for now, so thanks for watching. Sorry if I rambled in this video, I just wanted to make sure to give a good foundation for the upcoming videos over each of the normal forms. That's because this stuff is super important. So thanks guys, and as always, please click like, and if you enjoy this channel, please click subscribe. Thanks guys.